Hi there, welcome to the Dietitians and Nutrition Support Channel. My name is Lauren and today I'll be kicking off our enteral nutrition series talking through a standard patient on an enteral feed. This is a great video if you're a beginner to nutrition support and are just learning about the basic calculations and it's also great if you want to review some of the foundational pieces of your more advanced practice. If you have any questions or concerns or comments of any variety today, don't forget to leave them in the boxes below. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel for more updates on enteral feeds, parenteral feeds, and other nutrition support topics. Without further ado, let's get to those calculations. Our case study patient for today's name is Mr. X. Mr. X is a 28-year-old gentleman, 6 feet tall, 176 pounds. If you do the math there, there's no super concerning weight factors um, in regards to his height. In the second column here, you'll see that we saw no significant lab concerns in his chart. He did have some noted swallowing difficulty, uh, but apparently they don't think that that's going to be a long-term problem because they only plan for short-term enteral feeds. That's likely why they selected the route of an NGT or a nasogastric tube. Nasogastric tubes are not really meant for use more than a few days or a few weeks, um, so this patient would likely be moved to a semi-permanent or more permanent fixture uh, should they be on longer-term enteral feeds. So with that NGT, that's going to go from the nasal passage directly to the stomach, and we'll see that at a continuous rate. The first step to determining how we're going to provide enteral feeds to this patient is going to be looking at their needs. The two important categories to consider for needs of just your average patient is going to be kcals, or overall energy, as well as protein. Both of these pieces can be determined in multiple ways. For total energy estimations, one of the most accurate ways we can determine this is indirect calorimetry. This process is somewhat expensive and a little bit cumbersome, uh, so many times uh, practitioners will not choose this method, even though it is regarded as one of the most accurate ways we can determine energy needs. Should you not be using indirect calorimetry, you may use something like a predictive equation. These also work to try and determine what a patient's needs are and can be helpful uh, when you have a patient in critical care or on a ventilator um, or just your average Joe. So either of those processes are appropriate for determining calorie needs and you'll just have to use your clinical judgment to determine those. For protein recommendations, I feel as though we most often see individuals using a number of grams per kilogram of body weight. This simple estimation allows for individuals who have special disease states or special needs um, to have appropriate calculations to ensure that they can grow adequately and heal appropriately uh, based on all of their needs. So we're not going to solve that through today for our case study patient, but both of these pieces are really important factors in your own clinical judgment. Um, so make sure that you're working on those pieces, developing those, and learning how to make the best decisions for your actual patients in the future. Today's patient, we're just going to use an estimation here of 1,800 to 2,000 kcals a day and we're gonna use 80 to 90 grams of protein per day. Uh, so that will help us when we move to our second step of formula choice. When choosing an enteral formula, there are a few things to consider. One of the first aspects to look at is your patient's overall GI function. Patients that have limited GI function are going to see problems with digesting certain kinds of formula and may need specific choices based on their GI tract. Another concern for formula choice would include volume tolerance. For patients that have any sort of volume concerns um, in terms of severe swelling, fluid retention, and other things related to their disease state, they may be on some sort of fluid restriction. Um, so if they cannot handle a large volume, then you may need to choose a formula that has a higher concentration of all of their nutrients to ensure that they have limited free water and fluid. 
Another thing to look at would include disease state. When you have a patient that is in a particular acute or chronic disease state, uh, they may need a specific kind of formula that would provide to their specific needs. Um, so again, making sure that you're customizing and tailoring this formula recommendation to the best of your ability for this patient's needs. For our patient today, we didn't see any significant concerns in the chart regarding GI function, volume tolerance, or disease state. This makes it so this patient is appropriate for a standard formula. I also chose a fiber-containing formula today, uh, being that this patient likely is appropriate uh, for consuming fiber as they are transitioning from an oral diet that had fiber in it onto the central feed. So we're going to see how that fiber works for them starting off uh, to help maintain bowel health. Some things to know about this particular formula. It has one and a half kcals per milliliter. It has 63.8 grams of protein per liter. And it also has 760 milliliters of free water per liter. The last thing to know about this formula is that it takes 1,000 milliliters to meet the DRIs. Step three of this would be estimating formula needs. Obviously, we need to provide something that's appropriate for this patient in terms of energy and protein. And where I'm going to aim today is probably at the 2,000 calorie mark. If I'm looking to provide 2,000 calories to this patient, and each of our 1 milliliters of formula provides 1.5 kcals, that's going to give me a total of about 1,333 milliliters per one day. If I was trying to see how we could provide all of these milliliters to give all 2,000 calories over the entirety of the 24 hours, I could multiply that by the one day and 24 hours to then get approximately 55 milliliters per hour. Now, if you did all the calculations with me, you'll know that this actually gave us a result of 55 and a half milliliters per hour. So you may say to me, well, why didn't we round to 56? It's a little difficult sometimes to determine exactly what your future hospital is going to recommend. Some hospitals say keep it as exact as possible, utilize the 56. Other hospitals would like for you to stay within increments of five, meaning that your numbers will either be something like 55 or 60 or 65. So being that we're at about 55, I decided to stick with that policy of going in increments of five and utilize the 55 milliliters per hour rate for our enteral recommendations. So now that we've determined what our estimated formula needs are, Let's confirm how much formula we're actually going to provide. This patient is getting 55 milliliters per hour for 24 hours throughout the day. That's actually going to give an exact total of 1,320 milliliters per day. If we want to convert that to energy, we can use our 1.5 kcals per milliliter to convert that all the way to 1,980 kcals per day. So before we clear the page, I want you to take note of one specific number. That's this, 1,320 milliliters per day. This is the total volume we'll be providing to this patient. But in our future calculations, we'll actually need it in the ratio of liters per day, just for ease of calculation. So if you remember, there's 1,000 milliliters per liter, so this would equal 1.32 liters per day. So let's continue these calculations looking at the amount of protein provided from our recommended 55 milliliters of formula per hour every hour of the day. We can use our number 1.32 liters here when multiplying to determine protein provisions. For protein, we're giving 63.8 grams of protein per liter based on what we see here in the standard fiber-containing formula. 
If you do the math on that, we'll get about 84 grams of protein per day. And when we look back over here to our needs, you can see that that's smack in the middle and does reach our needs for the day. So the sixth step of this process is determining the fluid needs of our patient. For patients that have any kinds of fluid restrictions or major concerns there, you may have a different way to calculate this, but most of the time we'll see your regular average Joe patient needing one milliliter of free water for every one kcal that they consume. So being that we did our calculations based off a 2000 kcal plan, I'll say that this patient needs about 2,000 milliliters of free water per day. After spelling out your patient's distinct needs, you can then utilize our fiber-containing formulas notes here saying that 760 milliliters of free water are provided with every liter of formula. We can use our number 1.32 liters here to then calculate this out and see how much fluid comes from the formula every day. If you have 760 milliliters free water per one liter of formula, you'll see that we get about 1,000 milliliters of free water every day from formula. As you can see here, the 2,000 milliliters minus 1,000 milliliters means that our patient still needs another 1,000 milliliters of free water provided to them. You can see this in a couple different ways. Some hospitals will ask for you to just provide the extra free water needed, and some other hospitals will ask for you to recommend how much and what times of the day to provide that free water. For example, you may see this split up into four different times of 250 milliliters of free water, uh, which could also be written as 250 mils Q6, meaning every six hours. Step number seven is determining whether or not this patient has met their micronutrient DRIs. This formula states that it takes 1,000 milliliters to meet the DRIs for all micronutrients at at least 100%. So if we need to meet 1,000 milliliters and we provide our patient with 1,320 milliliters, that means that we will, yes, provide enough micronutrients to meet at least 100% of the DRIs every single day. If our patient wasn't meeting the DRIs, we may need to consider a different formula, supplementing other vitamins and minerals, or considering what other means of nutrition they are provided to ensure that they get enough to heal appropriately. Now, the final step of this process, writing your end recommendations. After going through all these calculations, we've now determined that we're going to be providing our patient with a standard fiber containing formula. This formula will be provided to our patient at a rate of 55 milliliters per hour times 24 hours. This will give us a total of 1320 milliliters per day. In terms of fluid and free water flushes, our patient is going to need 250 milliliters Q6, meaning four times a day, or an additional 1,000 milliliters provided per day. In terms of energy, we're giving our patient 1,980 kcals. For protein, we came to a total of 84 grams. And the overall fluid we're providing is the 1,000 from the formula plus the 1,000 milliliters from our free water flushes. This is gonna give us a total of two liters every day. Now, if we look at step number seven, we can check off this box saying that we did meet our DRIs for the day. Since we've been able to look at all the different pieces here as to what our patient needs and what they'll be provided, we can say that yes, this patient can reach all of their needs through enteral formula. Thanks for sticking with me through this video, um, and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.